I remember there was a riot in the street. Everybody trying to get in to see Dorothy Lamore. And it broke my heart when they tore that old hotel down. What the hell are they going to tear down next? The Alamo? But like I said, I ain't complaining. I've had my share of fancy hotels, wild parties, and two-inch thick ribeyes and cold Mexican beer. It's the driving that I can't give up. Roaring down a Texas highway in a big old Oldsmobile with the windows open and bugs splattering across the windshield and me feeling as wild and free as a Comanche Indian. I guess those were about the best days of my life, those lease buying trips when I was a young land man with a big car and expensive help. those old times now, there's one day that stands out as special. One day I won't ever get out of my mind as long as I live. This would have been way back in the 40s, right after the war. I'd been to the courthouse in Floyd County and got the name of this old boy who lived alone on a hard scrabble ranch that the geologist told me was sitting on a pool of oil as big as the Gulf of Mexico. They warned me at the courthouse about this fellow. Said to honk all the way up to the house because he was the sort of fellow that didn't like to be taken by surprise. But he was friendly enough. Just an old, old man, bad eye, and a missing thumb he said he'd lost in a groping accident when he was a kid driving cattle up the good night loving trail. except listen to the stock report on the radio. We sat out on his porch drinking orange soda pop. And I listened to him talk about cattle diseases and the neighbor who'd been trying to steal his riparian rights for 40 years and whether Jim Bowie did bury all that uh, silver out in San Saba County, like people said. Then he showed me his arrowhead collection. I'd never seen a collection like that. He kept it all in shoe boxes. And there must have been 300 shoe boxes stacked up on the floor of that front room alone. And every one of them filled with the 
top with arrowheads, points, scrapers, and I don't know what all. Every one of those things he said had come from his ranch. He even had a rusty old sword from the Spanish days. You can still read the writing on it. It said, Draw me not in anger. On the other side it said, Sheath me not in shame. admired his arrowheads for an hour or two, I finally worked the conversation around to his mineral rights. I told him I'd come here, come there to make him a rich man. He said, well, I guess you wouldn't mind that, since he'd worked hard all his life and figured that Lord owed him a little money for his trouble. So we went over the contract argued back and forth about royalties and bonus payments and such. When we got all, all that worked out, I handed him a pen. But just before he was about to sign, he looked up at me and said, there's one place you can't drill. I said, well, where's that, sir? He pointed to the map. Right here, on top of this bluff. Well, that was a problem. That's where the first well was supposed to go. I asked the old man why we couldn't drill there. He gave me a squinty look, took a sip of his sorty pop, and he said, I'll show you. I said, all right, let's go. But he shook his head and said, not now. You got to wait till sunrise. with an old man like that, not if I wanted his signature on the lease. So I spent the night on an old army cot in that room with the shoe boxes. And way before daylight, he woke me up, put me on a horse, and we rode for an hour or more in the dark till we came to that bluff. Sitting on his horse, that old man looked about 20 years younger. crevice in the rock and out onto the floor of the Amparica Canyon. Then we climbed up to this cave sitting there on the canyon wall.
see nothing in here. I said to the old man, what was it you wanted to show me? He said, hush up and wait. slip over the horizon and I could hear the morning doves calling and there were swallows flying out of their mud nest at the top of the cave and then one ray of light started to travel across the plains moving across the grass then across the floor of the canyon like it was looking for something finally it came into the cave and settled on a pile of rocks a few feet behind where we were standing and lit it up like a Christmas tree. It was then I saw it wasn't rocks. It was bones. had taken a bunch of old jaw bones and set them on end so they made kind of a platform. And on that platform was a skull from some animal I'd never seen before. The skull was big, thick, flat, and prehistoric looking. It had two horns that swept out on either side like a long horn steer. The skull's eye sockets were as big as my fists. And they were staring out toward the plains. I had the feeling that those eye holes were watching the sunrise just like I was. What the hell is that? I said to the old man. the skull belonged to an old buffalo. Not the kind of buffalo we know about, but the kind that died out thousands and thousands of years ago. Way back in those times, some fella had climbed up to this cave with this buffalo skull and very carefully set it up on these jaw bones so that it was looking east across the plain. Oh, she did. 
did that, I asked. Why do you think, he said, looking out to where the sun was rising and the hawks were circling. They didn't have no First Baptist Church back in them days. Where else was he going to go to do his worshiping? Besides, sunrise up here is mighty pretty. I guess that old boy wanted the buffalo instead. Yeah. 